Well, what's going on there guys? It is the Earthmaster here on this beautiful Thursday evening, October 14th, 2021. Got an earthquake coming into the uh, Earthquake 3D globe there on the map, or at least on the globe here. A 4.2 earthquake striking the South America region right into the, uh, looks like the Peru-Chile Trench. Pretty deep earthquake, 185 kilometers for that 4.2, just hitting the Earthquake 3D bell or the Earthquake 3D globe here. Uh, it is October 14, 2021, 7.13 uh, p.m. California time. See what's going on around the globe here on the USGS map, 2.5 and above. And it uh, looks like 4.0 internationally. Quite the buildup of earthquake activity. Philippines southward, seeing a cluster of fours and fives in this region, uh, including uh, some deeper earthquake activity. Around the Philippines area with that 5.6 or 4.5 at 145 kilometers below the surface. Some pretty deep movement into the trench there, the Philippine Trench. And another one uh, right smack dab on it at the surface, 4.9 um, at 10 kilometers below the surface. Relatively quiet up here throughout the Japan area once again. Just uh, seems to be uh, very, I mean, it just seems to be very quiet. It's just, it's been that way for a, a little while. Periodically, we see some movement here, but it's just not like we should uh, normally see as far as release of pressure goes uh, in that area. Uh, along the Aleutian Trench, a little uptick in earthquake activity. Around the Aleutian Islands, 3.5, 4.1. Let's go ahead and add the all magnitudes onto the map here. You can see some further microquake activity into Alaska all the way up through Anchorage stretching up to Fairbanks and a swarm of activity into the Pacific Northwest with some activity around the volcanoes once again right around Mount Rainier see a little swarm of activity right there at the summit about seven earthquakes well minus this one we got six microquakes right smack dab at the summit this is the deep one, uh, 0.7 uh, ways away from the volcano, but most of the uh, these little microquakes, pretty shallow. One uh, looks like uh, one to two kilometers below the surface in the area of the uh, volcano in Washington. Also some further activity here southwest, southeast of Mount Vernon. A couple small microquakes and a little quake outside of Seattle. Uh, well, west of Seattle, I should say, near uh, Hoodsport. 11 kilometers, 11.1 kilometers for that little microquake uh, as far as the depth goes for that earthquake. Northern California, Cascadia subduction zone, relatively quiet as far as earthquake activity goes. This here is a subduction zone quake near Hydesville. The depth of this earthquake, 23.9 kilometers, indicating the, subduc the uh, subduction of that quake, or within the subduction area, I should say. Pretty small quake, but uh, nonetheless, some further movement at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone a trail of activity into parts of western nevada north of reno uh, around pyramid lake you can see this activity uh, just some microquakes and also the antelope valley area uh, and area southward around mono lake and long valley super volcano all seen a little uptick in earthquake activity over the last 24 hours ridgecrest movement uh, looking pretty typical for that little area that's seen uh, some good sized quakes there a couple years ago and also a little bit of movement along the Garlock Fault structure. Southern California looking uh, pretty quiet again, except for this little 2.0 struck along the, uh, which is fault system, the Osnor Fault System, the Mecula section, um, kind of a lengthy fault system that runs through here. You've got the San Jacinto Fault area and of course the San Andreas Fault that runs the plate boundary between the North American Pacific Plate swarming activity uh, there really isn't any around the Salton Sea looks pretty quiet in that region did see an earthquake way out here in the Great Basin Nevada a 3.6 near Eureka Nevada kind of just out there in the middle of nowhere also some further swarming into Utah once again this has been happening for uh, quite a while now not for sure what's brewing out there, but this is the 30 days all magnitudes, and you can see a swarm of movement, 232 earthquakes into that portion of Utah. And there's uh, there hasn't been a there hasn't been a main quake, it's just been a lot of small microquakes and occasionally some twos. Not for sure if we had any uh, 
actually we didn't even have anything above 2.5 so all of this activity below below the 2.5 threshold so something something kind of brewing out there uh, right up against those mountains uh, into Yellowstone National Park you can see some further movement around the Lake Yellowstone area and also separate up here northeast of West Yellowstone see what we got on the Yellowstone seismograph stations here you can see a little bit of swarming indicated on this map on the seismograph station right here all these little spikes indicating that earthquake activity and within the last hour or so another one taking place in the vicinity of the uh, Maple Creek area also around the uh, Lake Butte area, Lake Yellowstone, you can see the activity as well. But then again, all uh, pretty much micro microquakes in that area below 2.5. The, let's see, what do we got? Pecos, Texas area, ramping up again in earthquakes, right? Texas just, man, never seems to uh, calm down out there. 3.3, the largest quake in this little swarm of activity near Pecos. And up here around Oklahoma City, uh, surrounding it, kind of getting a few microquakes in that region. A little earthquake out here in North Carolina. Or uh, let's see where that's at here. Blue Ridge Mountains. Right, Smet. Well, it looks like it's on the border, close to the border, but on the Tennessee side. The 1.8 near Ducktown, Tennessee, 12.5 kilometers for that uh, earthquake. There's a movement in Puerto Rico, looks like, uh, kind of just sticking to the southwestern part of Puerto Rico area. 3.0 within the last hour. Puerto Rico Trench looks relatively quiet. No indicated earthquakes on the map. And there is the movement, the deeper earthquake activity into the Peru Chile Trench with that 4.2 striking within the last hour at 185 kilometers into the subduction zone of that region. The trimmer map along the Cascadia subduction zone kind of cut the trimmers in half from last night 242 epicenters of trimmer mostly confined to the southern end and also the northern end up here of the Cascadia subduction zone so while this is not a massive amount of trimmers occurring today it's still ongoing and continuing uh, for about three weeks or more now every day we're seeing uh, um, a lot of trimmer activity this is about the lowest it's been here in that three weeks but uh don't let that number fool you. We could see things change uh, pretty quickly. As uh, far as solar weather activity goes, folks, we'll go ahead and check that out. Things are kind of diminishing here. Um, looks pretty green. Green meaning minimal solar weather activity across the board. Looks like only a 25% chance of a sea flare with sunspot activity almost on the blank side. 2882 and 2885 heading away from the Earth. Back behind that, nothing but clear skies. Well, shouldn't say clear skies, but no sunspots and uh, diminishing solar weather activity. We do have a couple coronal holes up here north, one facing the Earth, and a little bit br uh, bigger one down here in the southern end. Uh, could provide uh, potentially some uh, possibilities in the next few days, although the three day geomagnetic for forecast right now calls for just very minimal chance of any type of solar weather activity uh, from those coronal holes. All right, folks, gonna jump off here. Um, hope everyone does have a uh, beautiful night, a good evening out there, Thursday evening. Tomorrow is Friday, right? I think a lot of us look forward to Friday. Gonna be a good day and a fun weekend. Hope everyone has a good night. We will chat you guys another time out there. Stay safe, everyone. Peace out.